Hey everyone, Ryan from U Bike Escape, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Eastspin Nesta, a folding fat tire electric bike. So let's get into it. Before we get started with the review, if you are looking to purchase an eSpin electric bike, please consider using the link in the description before completing your purchase. It's a free and easy way to help support eBike Escape. Thanks in advance for your support. I will also put links to our electric bike accessories list, top eBike brands page, and finally our electric bike discounts code page, where I track all the deals on the electric bike brands that I follow. And of course, that includes eSpin. With that, Let's get a closer look at this folding fat tire electric bike. Perhaps you have seen my review of the Eastman Sport. I actually have it hanging right here. Definitely check out that review if you are interested. And the reason I decided to review the Eastman Nesta is because I was pretty impressed with the value that you get with the Eastman Sport. So I wanted to check out some of their other models. And this is quite a bit different. Fat tires, folding. Let's start up here in the front of the bike. We have true fat tires. So these are 20 by four inches wide. Definitely some tread on here to give you some traction if you do decide to take this off-road. Of course, many people buying electric bikes similar to this, they still buy the fat tires even though they do plan to ride it on road. Definitely up to you, of course. These do add a little bit more rolling resistance. Now for stopping power, we have 160 millimeter rotors and this bike has hydraulic disc brakes. That's definitely one of the highlights, especially if you're comparing this to other folding fat tire electric bikes. Now, as I record this, the Eastman Nesta is priced at $15.99, though fairly often they do run sales. Again, check out our electric bike discounts code page because they will be listed there if I hear of any deals. And I believe you can use the link in the description if you decide to buy this off sale and still get $50 using my unique referral code. Now up front here, you will note that this is not a quick release. This is a bolt-on axle. So if you do happen to get a flat and you wanna be able to change it while out on a ride, you will want to bring a wrench. This is something that I'd actually like to see changed on this bike. I just prefer quick releases, just makes removing that front tire very easy. Now this bike does come fully outfitted. We have plastic fenders. You can see the attachment points there. Lots of clearance, no issues there. And it does come with this front rack. And of course, if you install the front rack, you do move that light to the front of the rack. So just keep in mind that if you have the light mounted here, it's going to move with the tire. But of course, with the light mounted to the rack, it's mounted to the frame. And so when you move the handlebars, that light is going to be in a fixed position. Now this front rack is a similar design that you'll see on many electric bikes or electric bike companies that sell front racks. Of course, you could put whatever kind of basket you want on here to have additional storage space up front. So definitely a versatile, bike when you consider that it comes with the front rack as well as that rear rack, which we'll get to here in just a second. Okay, next let's talk about the cable management. I always like to highlight cable management, especially when the company has done a nice job. And I think Eastman has done a nice job here. You can see that the cables all come into this nice neoprene sleeve that has a zipper so you can still access it. Looks nice and clean. Of course, you wanna have these wires out of the way of that front rack and then they enter the frame at the bottom of the down tube, I'll call it right here. 
So really like the cable management up here on the eSpin Nesta. Let's actually talk about the suspension. We do have a preload adjustment on the left side and there is a lockout, just locks into position or is unlocked. I can show you that here quickly. And we'll actually leave it unlocked because I will show you the suspension. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and push down on the suspension here so you can get an idea of what to expect. Actually feels pretty good. Definitely gonna soak up some bumps. And of course you have the fat tires, which are really nice at soaking up bumps. You can run lower tire pressure on those as well. Let's move on to the cockpit of the Eastman Nesta. As I mentioned, hydraulic brakes, definitely not a feature you find on many electric bikes in this price range. Now I will say these feel a little bit more like budget hydraulic brakes, but they still stop plenty good. You'll just find on some more expensive e-bikes that use perhaps Tektro hydraulic brakes. They just feel a little bit better, but nothing wrong with these. That's one of the highlights, not only of this bike, but of the e-spin sport as well. Really like the hydraulic brakes over the mechanical ones, of course, if you can fit it into your budget. We also have locking grips with a little palm rest. Again, not a feature you find on many affordable electric bikes. It is a small thing, but I definitely prefer locking grips. They feel pretty nice. Now let's talk about the throttle here. So this is a left-hand thumb throttle. And you should note that this is a different thumb throttle than comes on many electric bikes. This one is what I would call a softer touch compared to some of the other ones that you push down. So this thumb throttle works a little bit differently because you press it forward as opposed to down. I feel like I could press this a lot longer than those other thumb throttles. So I definitely like to see this throttle on electric bikes. Now we have the controls here. These are the same controls that you'll find on the eSpin Sport. And to turn the bike on, you actually want to make sure that the battery is turned on here. There is a little switch. I'll go ahead and turn the eSpin Nesta on. Nice display. It looks really nice at night. I do find that I wish it went a little bit brighter or it was easier to see in the daylight. That was something that I commented on with the eSpin Sport, but it is a nice large center mounted display. You can see we have a battery indicator in the top right hand side. We have your speed front and center, pedal assist level, zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Of course, we have the trip odometer in the bottom right side. And if I press the M button here, that changes to average speed. And we have max speed and back to your current speed. And if you hit the power button, you'll cycle through time and the overall odometer, 12 miles on this bike. And we do also have power for the number of watts outputted. That's something I like to see on electric bikes. Just always good to see how many watts you're pushing to that motor. So if I go ahead and hit the throttle a little bit, you'll see that number change. And of course you can see the speedometer as well. One thing that's cool about the eSpin Sports display is you do have a USB port tucked right beneath the display so you can charge your phone or any other device that you'd like. Let's move on to the right side. So we have a S-Ride eight-speed shifter. Now S-Ride is the same brand components that they used on the eSpin Sport. So I have some familiarity. Now it isn't a name brand shifter, but I've been definitely impressed. I'm sure that's a way that they're able to save a little bit of money and of course I definitely prefer that this is a trigger shifter compared to the thumb shifters. So it feels really good, but definitely not a name brand component, something to just keep in mind, but I've had no issues with this. I've actually been really impressed. So next I wanna jump into the folding functionality on the eSpin Nesta. Before we do, I thought I would share with you, there is a quick release right here and this allows you to Raise the handlebars up, though you are somewhat limited by these cables. So I'll just go ahead and show you here. So they are in their lowest position here. So keep that in mind when you watch the third person riding footage, the handlebars are in their lowest position. I am six feet tall. So I'll go ahead and raise these up. So you can raise them up just a little bit. That might allow you to get in a little bit more comfortable riding position, of course, depending on your height. So now let's jump into how the eSpin Nesta folds. 
One of the things that I wanted to highlight with the Eastman Nesta, and this is true of many of the folding electric bikes on the market today, but I think it's a good hack, if you will, if you're buying a folding electric bike, and that is to purchase a tote. I will put on the screen the dimensions of this tote, but I wanted to show you just how the Eastman Nesta can fit into a tote like this. Now, you might be wondering why you might want to do something like this. And the reason for that is because a lot of these folding bikes with bigger batteries and motors, they are really heavy and it is very difficult to pick this bike up and throw it in the back of your vehicle. So nice thing with the tote, you have two handles and you can put it in a wide variety of vehicles makes it much more easy to take it on the go in your RV, things like that. And of course you have the bike in the bin, so it's not going to move around wherever you put it. And you should also be aware with the front rack installed here on the East Spin Nesta, it doesn't interfere with the rear rack. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Okay, now I will take it out of the bin and unfold it so you get an idea of how the East Spin Nesta folds and unfolds. Okay, so first I'm going to take it out of the bin here. And as I said, a very heavy electric bike. Now there is a stand and most folding electric bikes do have stands right here at the bottom of the frame here. And I'm going to unfold it by lifting up and pulling the front forward. Now there is a latch on the right side. Really like these style latches. They feel nice and secure. Gonna go ahead and close that. And then of course you have the folding pedals. Simply push and they kind of lock into place. And then of course the handlebars and there is a latch here as well. And that's it. That's how you unfold the E-Spin Nesta. And I'll just give you a quick look at the latches for the folding mechanisms up here by the handlebars. And then as I mentioned down here, simply pull this forward and then the latch will release. So that's how the E-Spin Nesta folds. Let's continue on to the rest of the E-Spin Nesta. Of course, this is a step through frame. Really like the design, definitely going to be accessible to a wide variety of riders. So we have the E-Spin logo here and we do have some bottle cage bosses. Nice, easy access. You could of course mount a lock there if you prefer. Now I did show off the pedals in the folding section of this video, but just to note, these are Welgo pedals, definitely a brand you see on many electric bikes. And here's a look at the battery. So this is a 10.5 amp hour battery, 504 watt hours. It is the shark style. Here's the charging port. You can charge the battery on or off the bike. And on the other side, we have the keys to unlock the battery. Just to note that you do not need to have the keys in there in order to ride the bike. I just leave the keys in so I don't lose them. So go ahead and unlock this battery. Also just wanted to point out that there is an indicator down here. You can press the button and get a slight idea of the battery capacity. So I'll go ahead and unlock the battery here. This is a re-engine pack. You can see we have the re-engine branding on the key. That is a brand that makes many of the battery cases that you'll see on electric bikes. Now, of course, one of the nice things with the positioning of this battery is it is pretty easy to remove because it is right here in the front. So there's a good look at the battery. And I was mistaken, it is a 48 volt, 10.4 amp hour, according to the battery here. And that is 499.2 watt hours. And to install the battery, simply line up the grooves here. And of course you have gravity working in your favor. Goes on nice and easy. Here's a closer look at the stand that I highlighted earlier and just wanted to give you a closer look at the cable management. You can see that the cables run underneath the frame here and you do have this box here. I'm going to assume that the controller is housed in this box. Moving on to the rear here, of course, the kickstand is mounted towards the rear of the bike. Not going to have issues with the pedals coming in contact with that if you're moving the bike around. There's a closer look at those hydraulic disc brakes on this side. You do have the motor cable here. 
This is obviously the hydraulic brake line. Again, full fenders over here on the rear. And I really like this rear rack. It's actually a little bit longer than you see on many electric bikes. And the design of the frame matches really well with the E-Spin Nesta frame. You can see that they bend right here nicely together. Definitely a sleek looking electric bike in my opinion. The rear rack has an 18 kilogram capacity and the rear light is mounted on the rear of the rack. I'll go ahead and turn the lights on. So there's a closer look at that rear light. You can see that the center light is on. And then when I hit the brakes, you can see that the brake light comes on. Definitely one of the nicer lights that you'll see on affordable electric bikes. And I'll just show you the front light as well. With a lot of these front lights, I always say that they're pretty good for being seen, especially at night. Though if you are riding a lot at night, I highly recommend external rechargeable lights. Check out our electric bike accessories list. I have some of my favorites listed there. I also really like those rechargeable lights that have the blinking functionality. That's something I wish electric bike brands did with their integrated lights is have some flashing functionality. Let's talk a little bit about the saddle here. Definitely a very standard saddle, I would say. Definitely not the firmest, but definitely not the softest that I've seen. Again, check out our electric bike accessories list. If you buy this bike and you're looking for something a little bit more comfortable, of course, you can also upgrade to a suspension seat post here. Highly recommend that as well. I have various videos on that. Let's move on to the motor and the drivetrain. So we have a 750 watt motor that peaks, I believe at 1000 watts. Definitely check out the first person riding footage. I'll share with you just how powerful this motor is. You can see it climb a very large hill. In the rear here, we have 13 to 32 teeth. And in the front chain ring here, single walled, we have 48. Here's a closer look at that S ride rear derailleur. We do have some protective tape going to protect your frame from any chain slap. And I also wanted to mention the weight of the Eastman Nesta is 65 pounds. All right, with that, let's get to some first person riding footage. I'll go through the various pedal assist levels and then we'll take this bike up the large hill that I test out all of our electric bikes on. Okay, here we are on the Eastman Nesta and it's been quite a few days since I've been able to get out riding. You can see all the snow we have. Uh, but happy to have some warmer temperatures and clear streets. For this first person riding footage on the East Spin Nesta, a little quick story before I get started. So I did take this bike out for a quick spin. Very quickly noticed that it was only reaching a top speed of 20 miles per hour. Now on their website, they advertise this bike being a class three electric bike reaching speeds up to 25 miles per hour. Quickly hopped on my computer, started a chat and the representative, Maya, I believe, sent me a link to the assembly instructions. Maybe should have checked that first. But anyway, I did go ahead. This bike did come at a top speed of 20 miles per hour. I went ahead and overrode that, I believe to 41 kilometers an hour was the top uh, that they allowed me to change it to. I'll put on the screen a quick screenshot of the advanced settings just in case you do buy this bike and are looking for an easy way to find those instructions. But either way, was able to get it overridden and got to test out uh, eSpin's customer support a little bit and they were very quick to respond. Love the chat support. Anyway, so what we are going to do here is we're going to start with a throttle only test and we'll see how fast we can go. I'm assuming 25 miles per hour. Got the GPS over here. This is the speedometer app by Cool Nix. Probably not going to be able to see the e-spin display. This is one improvement they can definitely make on this bike. Not a deal breaker, but just wish it was a little bit easier to see. It's not even super sunny out, but it is a dim display even on an overcast day like today. All right, with that throttle only, here we go. Three, two, one. Definitely a little pickup. And this is a 750 watt motor that peaks at 900 plus watts. There's 20, 23. Now the display is reading 25 miles per hour, but my GPS speed is saying 23. Oh, there's 24 for just a second. So I imagine perhaps that max speed is associating obviously 
with whatever parameters you have. For instance, the tire setting. So as soon as it's hitting that 25 or so miles per hour, it's kind of kicking off. So yeah, 23 miles per hour, I can think I can say solidly on throttle only, maybe 24. Okay, now the other really cool thing is when I was looking at those advanced settings, I noticed that you can actually go into the advanced settings and change the amount of power output at the various pedal assist levels. Now, when I reviewed the Eastman Sport, this is not something that I was aware of. And by the way, the Eastman Sport is advertised as a class two electric bike, 20 miles per hour. So it kind of makes me wonder if you can actually override that bike as well. But anyway, talking about the various pedal assist levels. So just keep in mind, you can override these uh, if you'd like, maybe give it a little less power in the lower assist settings. But right now I'm in pedal assist one, actually in eighth gear, I can probably shift down a little bit, make it a little bit easier on myself. Nice leisurely pace here, going 10 miles an hour, six gear here. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist two. Definitely feel a bump there. Now, a lot of the electric bikes that we ride were almost always in the highest gear and then we just adjust the pedal assist levels and still pretty comfortable in six gear here and pedal assist two going about 13 miles an hour. I could maybe shift up if I wanted a little bit slower of a cadence, but let's go ahead and go into pedal assist three. Again, feel the motor kicking in there again. And this is definitely the point where I'd like to shift up. Seventh gear, eighth gear. And there's 17 miles an hour. Go ahead and take a turn here. All right, let's go ahead and go into pedal assist four. Oops, four. And I'm assuming we'll hit 20. Yep, there's 20. And that's pretty comfortable still. Not spinning my legs too much. So I feel like the gearing is actually pretty good. Of course, when I go into pedal assist five, that might change a little bit. We'll do that here at the stop sign. And we'll actually start from a dead stop as well. Okay, here we go. Pedal assist five, we'll see what this can do. I'm assuming, again, 23 miles per hour is going to be that max speed. Now the GPS is showing 22, the display is showing 24. There's 23 miles an hour for a little bit. Pretty flat road. And I'm pushing pretty hard on these pedals. Doesn't seem to want me to go any faster than 22. But of course you have that throttle if needed. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a little bit better idea of the power of this electric bike and the various pedal assist modes. Again, you can customize these, so that's really cool. With that, let's get to the hill climb footage and I'll show you just what this 750 watt motor can do up some steep hills. Okay, here we are at the hill climb test. Now, this is the hill that I take up all of the electric bikes that we review. So you can compare and contrast. What you're probably gonna be most interested in is looking at the minimum speed that a lot of these bikes hit to get an idea of motor performance. First test is throttle only. And we'll see what this 750 watt motor can do. It says I'm using 870 watts. Go ahead and go around this truck. All right, and the hill is just about to start. It does look much smaller on the GoPro. There's 17 miles an hour. 
Now, one thing I also wanted to call out is I really do appreciate the throttles that Eastman is using on their bikes. There's 13 miles an hour. Now, I do prefer right-hand twist grip throttles, but as far as thumb throttles go, these are definitely some of the best ones that I've personally seen. It's just a little bit more of a softer push, and you're kind of using the tip of your thumb as opposed to the side of your thumb, I guess. Just feels a little bit more comfortable if you're using the throttle a lot. So I think the minimum speed I saw was 13 miles an hour, so that's pretty good about what I'd expect from a 750 watt motor. So this bike should be capable of handling a majority of hills, of course, maybe the exception being if you live in the mountains. And I did have the bike fully charged up uh, before I left on my first person riding footage. All right, and we are at the top. So I'm going to go back down and I'll do it while pedaling just to give you a bit more of an idea because generally speaking, a lot of people are going to be pedaling, get a little bit of exercise and conserve some battery. Okay, here we are at the bottom of the hill. Just gonna use a little bit of throttle to get me started so I can shift down. All right, pedal assist one, all the way in first gear here. Using just about a hundred watts here. And so I'd probably wanna shift up. Prefer a little bit of a slower cadence. So pedal assist one looks like about nine miles an hour going up this hill. Let's go ahead and go into Pelsis 2. Definitely gonna shift up here. I think that's third gear, maybe fourth gear. Still pretty leisurely pace, going 11 miles an hour. Let's go ahead and go into Pelsis 3 here. We were using 500 watts, now we're up to 800, 900 watts. Pelsis 3 going about 12 miles an hour probably shift up here. Let's go into sixth gear. Pedal assist four. 14 miles an hour. And again, I'm not working too terribly hard. So pretty impressed with this motor power for sure. There's 15 miles an hour. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist five as we approach the top of the hill. I think I'd probably stay in this gear, maybe seventh gear. Still using in the high 800s. So yeah, overall pretty good. I wouldn't be concerned about the hill climbing ability of this bike. So hopefully that helps you. And one thing I didn't talk about earlier was can you pedal this electric bike if your battery were to die? or you have some other issue. Uh, I will wait till I get to a little bit of a flatter area here. And usually the answer is yes, but you're not really gonna go very fast and hills are gonna be a significant challenge. So I'm in first gear here and I'm going five miles an hour and I'm still working a bit. And so yeah, hills, Definitely going to be a challenge, but it can be done. So with that, let's get to some third person riding footage and I'll give you my concluding thoughts on the Eastman Nesta. Having reviewed the Eastman Sport, the Eastman Nesta is exactly what I expected as it sports many of the same components. Though the Nesta does offer some benefits depending on your use case. The main difference is the frame design. The step through frame design is accessible and Eastman notes it should fit riders 5 foot 2 to 6 foot 4. I'm 6 feet tall for reference. Another benefit of course is that it folds, which makes traveling with it easy even if you don't have a bike rack for your vehicle. As I alluded to earlier, when this bike goes on sale it's especially a good value. Firstly, included front and rear racks are rare, so if you plan to haul some cargo that is a big bonus. The motor is powerful and should be able to tackle the steepest of hills. 
The extra couple miles per hour is a nice bonus with pedal assist, though keep in mind technically a class 2 e-bike should not allow you to use the throttle over 20 miles per hour. As always, follow local laws and regulations and change settings at your own risk. And finally, the standout feature to me, the Zoom hydraulic disc brakes. Usually these aren't components you see on an e-bike until you get closer to the $2,000 price point. There are some other less than obvious features as well that I like with the eSpin Nesta, like the ability to customize the amount of motor power you get at each pedal assist level. More and more e-bikes seem to have this feature, but it is not universal. And I was really impressed with the chat support. Maybe I got lucky, but I was surprised at the responsiveness. My only knock on the Eastman Nesta is the battery capacity. The 10 amp hour capacity isn't super small like you see on some folding e-bikes, but it's less than the average capacity, which in my book is about 14 amp hours for electric bikes around the $1,500 price point. Eastman says it's good for 40 miles, which might be likely in more ideal conditions. 20 to 30 miles is a better estimate of what folks should expect. So if you're really looking to take some long adventures, you might want to look elsewhere. And speaking of adventures, the 4-inch fat tires paired with the front suspension make this bike capable of some off-road paths and trails. Just don't expect to hit up any single track. The Nesta comes in the color you see here, glacier blue, as well as smoke gray. Again, if you're planning to purchase an e-spin electric bike, check out the link in the description, not only to help support the channel, but also to save some money yourself. Thanks to e-spin for making this review possible, and thanks to you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.